distinguished colleagues, let us resume our meeting. We shall now start the interactive dialogue with the Special Rapporteur on the Situation of Human Rights in Eritrea. It is my pleasure to welcome the Special Rapporteur on the Situation of Human Rights in Eritrea, Ms. Sheila Kisarus. Before I give the floor to the Special Rapporteur, I would like to remind you that the list of speakers will close in 15 minutes from now. I now invite Ms. Kisa Rus to present her report. You have 10 minutes, ma'am. Thank you. Mr. Vi Vice President, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, I'm pleased to engage in this interactive dialogue and present my fourth report pursuant to the Council's resolution 32-24. This resolution extended the mandate of the Special Rapporteur on the situation of human rights in Eritrea for one year. The resolution also requested the mandate holder to follow up on the implementation of the recommendations of the Commission of Inquiry on Human Rights in Eritrea in its report A slash HRC slash 32 slash 47, presented to the Human Rights Council in June 2016. In my report, I provide an update on the human rights situation. I conclude that the government of Eritrea has not made any effort to address the human rights concerns highlighted by the Commission of Inquiry and it has shown no willingness to tackle impunity regarding perpetrators of past and ongoing human rights violations. I end with several recommendations. During the reporting period, I received information about continuing arbitrary arrests and detention as well as new cases. Conditions in detention remain harsh, leading to irreparable damage to health of prisoners, in some instances even causing death. Sehai Tesfamariam, a Jehovah's Witness, died on the 30th of November 2016 after having been imprisoned at the Meta camp since his arrest in January 2009. I'm deeply concerned about that almost 16 years later, family members and the world at large are kept completely in the dark about the physical and mental health conditions as well as the whereabouts of the G15 and journalists imprisoned since 2001. Similarly, I have not received information about others who have disappeared or held incommunicado, including those arrested after the aftermath of the photo incident in 2013. Also, I have not received any updates on the situation of the remaining prisoners of war from Djibouti. In this context, it should be noted that the Working Group on Enforced or Involuntary Disappearances recently published a general allegation based on information from credible sources alleging obstacles to implementing the Declaration on the Protection of All Persons from Enforced Disappearance in Eritrea. The importance and value of full access to places of detention by international monitors cannot be sufficiently emphasized. The Eritrean government's continued refusal to accept such scrutiny as a concrete first step for openness is incomprehensible and obstructive. Migration is certainly a multifaceted and complex phenomenon that must be viewed from various angles and perspectives. But human rights cannot be considered as bargaining chips in this context. 
Beyond the numbers involved, I urge the international community to see the human tragedy in terms of the cost in human lives. The international community should show a strong commitment to address the root causes of human rights violations as the key reasons fueling the exodus of large numbers of people from Eritrea. As many Eritreans have pointed out to me, only justice and respect for human rights will bring a lasting solution to the problems relating to flights from the country. The Commission of Inquiry called on the government of Eritrea to ensure accountability for past and persistent human rights violations and crimes against humanity. It recommended to the government the establishment of independent, impartial and gender sensitive mechanisms and provide victims with adequate redress, including the right to truth and rep reparations. It noted, however, that far-reaching and substantial institutional and legal reforms would be required before the domestic legal system could hold perpetrators to account in a fair and transparent manner. At this point in time, neither the Security Council referral to the ICC nor the setting up of an accountability mechanism under the aegis of the African Union seem imminent. As an additional avenue for tackling impunity, the Commission of Inquiry recommended that Member States exercise jurisdiction over crimes against humanity when any alleged offender is present on their respective territories or extradite him or her to another state in accordance with international obligations. While advocating for universal jurisdiction as one of the possibilities for accessing justice for human rights violations and crimes against humanity, I am aware that there are other various other measures such as criminal procedures, prosecutions, truth-seeking uh, truth initiatives, reparations for victims, and institutional reform, which present other avenues. In any case, whatever the situation, victims call for justice and human rights protection need to be heeded to. Mr. President, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to highlight a few of the recommendations in my report. To the Government of Eritrea to take concrete steps to ensure a truly participatory process in preparation for Eritrea's next review under the UPR to ensure it adequately reflects the diverse voices of civil society organizations involved in the protection of human rights in Eritrea. To member states to cooperate closely with Eritrean human rights defenders and civil society organizations to ensure that human rights remain at the core of all engagement with the country, while also bearing in mind the findings of the Commission of Inquiry to civil society organizations to set up and support networks among victims of crimes against humanity and other human rights violations, human rights defenders and their partners at regional and global levels. I have said previously that in light of the findings of, the crime, of crimes against humanity, it cannot be business as usual with Eritrea. Let me add that there is no room for delaying tactics to support justice or complacency either. My plea to you all is to help the government to work towards providing a trustworthy ground for Eritrean society to move forward by emphasizing the supremacy of human rights. In my report, I have suggested a list of areas with the intention of assisting the Council in developing specific and time-bound benchmarks to assess substantive change that the Government of Eritrea should undertake during the next year and beyond. 
I hope that by this time next year, we will be able to celebrate such tangible improvements which will make a positive change in people's lives. I can go through the, some of the, uh, the list um, and just uh, to ensure that for the improvement of uh, human rights, uh, the human rights situation, the government of Eritrea will need to demonstrate which steps it has taken to first of all establish without delay an independent, impartial and transparent judiciary and ensure access to justice for all. To allow for the creation of political parties and hold fair, free and transparent democratic elections at all levels. Permit human rights defenders and independent civil society organizations, including gender specific organizations, to operate without constraints and interference. Discontinue the indefinite military national service by limiting it to 18 months for all current and future conscripts as stipulated by the 1995 proclamation on uh, national service. Implement the 1997 Constitution, put an immediate end to torture and ill-treatment, sexual violence and enslavement of conscripts, cease the practice of using conscripts, detainees and members of people's militia, and reserve army as forced labor, and also to put an end to the practice of arrest and detention carried out without legal basis and release immediately and unconditionally all those unlawfully and arbitrarily detained. Provide information on the fate and whereabouts of all those deprived of physical liberty. Provide immediate information on all prisoners of war and release them promptly. Allow legal representatives and family members immediate access to detainees. Allow independent monitoring of all places of detention with regard to both legality and conditions of detention. Immediately permit unhindered access by independent monitors, including the Office of the High Commissioner, for human rights and others recognized organizations to all places of detention, official, unofficial, to monitor the legality of detentions and the treatment of detainees and prison conditions, allow them to conduct regular and unannounced visits and act promptly on their recommendations. I am almost done, Mr. President. First of all, um, to continue, put an immediate end to the use of torture and other forms of ill-treatment, establish adequate complaints mechanisms, and ensure that prompt and effective investigations are conducted into all allegations of torture and ill-treatment with a view to bringing perpetrators to justice, put an end to discrimination on religious or ethnic grounds, and finally prohibit the assignment of women and girls to officials' quarters for forced domestic servitude, and implement a zero-tolerance policy for sexual abuse in the army and in detention centers. The list can continue, but these are the main ones which, on which the, um, the Council could monitor the progress on human rights in Eritrea. I thank you for your attention. I thank you for your presentation. According to the practice in the Council, we shall start by hearing the delegation of the concerned country. I will now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Eritrea. You have five minutes in total. You may use it now or divide it between now and the end of the discussion. You have the floor, sir. And the list of speakers is now closed. Mr. Vice President, I will deliver a short statement and the full version of the statement will be circulated and posted in the extranet. In May last month, the Eritrean people celebrated their 26th independence anniversary. The celebrations were held throughout the country as well as in the diaspora 
amid undiminished enthusiasm for a country that had to wage Africa's longest and most difficult armed struggle for liberation the honeymoon of independence could not but be still vibrant still mesmerizing 26 years on to read against the backdrop surreal report of the special rapporteur on a country she avidly hates but knows little to nothing about can only evoke indignation and outrage. As it was the case in the past, she has colored her latest ignominious report from several trips to Ethiopia and or from notorious quizzling to harbor malicious agenda against the country. It must be remembered that Ethiopia is a country seizing under a state of emergency ruled by a command post and that killed over 800 civilians while detaining over 26,000 others in the protests last year. Mr. Vice President, prolonged national service, which she desecrates as forced and slave labor, remains the hue and cry in her assiduous attempts to criminalize the government. She does not probe why national service was introduced in the first place, why it has been prolonged, and what latitudes are available to the government in the context of the war of aggression and existential threat that it continues to face. She dismisses the hefty salary increments introduced in 2015 as mere stipends, which is part and parcel of the comprehensive civil service salary increase that the government has launched after 18 years of austerity and salary freeze. She ventures into complex, complex defense issues to state, I quote, the failure to implement a boundary commission's decision cannot serve as justification for the open-ended and arbitrary nature of the national service. The occupation of the village cannot justify violation of human rights, end of quote. She is evident, evidently oblivious to the devastating consequences of the border conflicts and the fact that this border war claimed more than 120,000 lives. For Eritrea, history and Ethiopia's incessant saber rattling leave her with no other choice other than preparing for the wars to deter another war. If prolongation of national service is an onerous price that must be paid, with pragmatic and temporary adjustments on its duration if need be, this will have to be done. Mr. Vice President, the special rapporteur is an activist committed to regime change from the outset. Sadly, the misplaced mandate given to her did not temper her wayward conduct, but emboldened her to pursue her crusade against Eritrea without any bounds. She has no inkling about the enormous pain the people of Eritrea have gone through. She has no clue about the existential threats that they are facing and about the threats to regional peace and security. Her singular mission is to indict the government of Eritrea. Blinded by the singular mission, she has put forth in her current recommendations various unorthodox methods to implement the witch hunting of Eritrean officials she desperately craves for and to appropriate to herself the powers of a viceroy over Eritrea that she apparently dreams of at this modern age. Most people in this room realize that the Empress is naked. She has no clothes. Let us rectify a process that has been derailed for long. Mr. Vice President, Eritrea has its own sh several shortcomings and challenges as a young nation that has gone through war and that continues to face existential threats. The pace and momentum of its nation and institution building process that it has begun in earnest immediately after independence have been adversely affected by the second war in the sequel. This hardness notwithstanding, Eritrea has been willing and engaged in the UPR process with all its development partners. It has earnestly conducted a fruitful midterm review of the UPR. Eritrea firmly maintains that this is the only appropriate and constructive route. Eritrea's door is open and always been open for all those who wanted to genuinely engage in constructive dialogue and cooperation. Eritrea has been subjected to a country-specific mandate spirit headed by Ethiopia in pursuant of the regional conflict under the pretext of human rights. The Human Rights Council should not get embroiled in a regional conflict or political dynamics. Eritrea cannot accept the indignity of seeing members of the Council negotiating with Ethiopia about human rights in Eritrea, thus will not engage in a process that makes a mockery of human rights instruments. As such, 
Eritrea requests this assembly to end the toxic mandate of the special rapporteur and focus on the normative procedures that will yield dividends to Eritrea and the cause of human rights. I thank you, Mr. Vice President. Thank you. I now invite interested delegations to ask questions to the mandate holder and to make comments on her report. Before I give the floor to the first speaker on the list, I would like to remind you that the speaking time limit for this interactive dialogue is two minutes for all. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of the European Union. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. President, the European Union thanks the Special Rapporteur for her report. We remain deeply concerned about the human rights situation in Eritrea. We note the delay in taking measures to implement the recommendations of HRC Resolution 3224, those of the Special Rapporteur and of the former Commission of Inquiry. We reiterate our call on the government to continue taking forward substantial legal and institutional reforms to improve the respect for human rights and the rule of law, to release all political prisoners, to work towards ending the indefinite national service and to step up the fight against impunity. We also ask the government to respect the property rights and abstain from acts leading to arbitrary deprivation of property, including those of foreign communities. We take note that the government continues to grant access to the country to bilateral and international delegations. We welcome the visits made so far in the country by the OHCHR and encourage the government to continue to cooperate with the office and to consider the establishment of an OHCHR office in Eritrea. We also encourage Eritrea to cooperate with UN mechanisms, in particular the Special Rapporteur, including by granting her access to the country. The EU stands ready to work with the government to support its UPR program and would welcome a working meeting in Asmara. Finally, the EU will continue to support to efforts towards scrutiny and accountability for crimes and human rights violations in the country and supports the renewal of the Special Rapporteur mandate. Madam Special Rapporteur, in your view, how can OHCHR help Eritrea take concrete measures to implement the accepted UPR recommendations? Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, next is the United States. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. The United States thanks Special Rapporteur Sheila Katharuth for her service and appreciates her efforts to improve the human rights situation in Eritrea. The human rights situation in Eritrea remains a very serious concern and Eritreans continue to flee their own country in search of opportunities and freedom. It is imperative that the government of Eritrea implement the country's constitution and respect its provisions for independent executive, judicial and legislative branches, including the seating of an elected National Assembly. The government must also develop an independent and transparent judiciary, improve detention conditions, and release individuals arbitrarily detained, including political prisoners, journalists, and members of religious groups. We strongly support the Special Rapporteur's call for the immediate release of Abun Antonius, Patriarch of the Orthodox Church, who remains under house arrest and in poor health, and are disturbed by recent reports of the detention of members of minority religious groups. We continue to be deeply troubled about the indefinite period of forced participation in national service, which routinely exceeds the country's stated 18-month limit. Ending this practice remains one of the most important actions the government of Eritrea could take to improve the lives of its citizens. It's important that the Human Rights Council continue its efforts to monitor the human rights situation in Eritrea and to identify ways to improve the situation. We strongly urge the government of Eritrea to cooperate with efforts to monitor and promote human rights in Eritrea and continue to fully, sorry, to engage fully with the international community and the UN and to fulfill its human rights obligations and commitments. Madam Special Rapporteur, given OHCHR's visit to Eritrea last year, have you been able to work with OHCHR to gather additional information? Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Thanks to you. Uh, next is Norway. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. <coughs> Norway would like to thank the Special Rapporteur for a recent visit to Oslo and for her continued dedication towards accountability for victims of human rights violations. As a long-standing friend of Eritrea and its people, we remain deeply concerned about reports of grave human rights violations in the country. We remain committed to supporting the government of Eritrea in improving their human rights situation. 
We appreciate the intention of the government to collaborate with the international community in the implementation of the accepted UPR recommendations. We urge the government to enforce its efforts and to show concrete action in this regard. We also welcome the collaboration and the recent and upcoming visits by the OHCHR to Eritrea. We encourage Eritrea to extend an invitation to the Office of the High Commissioner to establish an office in the country. We understand that the current constitution might be amended. In this regard, we encourage the government to engage in broad and inclusive dialogue with all stakeholders, including civil society, to ensure that the Constitution pr protects fundamental human rights, such as the freedom of expression, association, and assembly. A question to the Special Rapporteur. How may the UN system, the Eritrean government and international partners, such as Norway, best work together with the aim of improving the situation for human rights in the country? I thank you. Thank you. Next is Switzerland. Monsieur le Vice-Président, la Suisse remercie la rapporteuse spéciale sur la situation des droits de l'homme en Érythrée pour son engagement et son rapport écrit. La Suisse continue d'être inquiète par les graves violations des droits de l'homme rapportées en Érythrée et appelle le gouvernement érythréen à tout mettre en œuvre pour y mettre fin. Elle réitère à cet égard sa disponibilité à poursuivre le dialogue et à coopérer avec les agences et mécanismes onusiens, ainsi qu'avec l'Érythrée, dans le but d'améliorer la situation des droits de l'homme dans le pays. Ma délégation note positivement la décision de l'Érythrée de s'engager activement pour assurer le suivi des recommandations de l'examen périodique universel qu'elle a accepté et espère que des progrès concrets pourront bientôt être établis dans ce cadre. Dans la même ligne, Elle encourage l'Érythrée à également renforcer la collaboration avec le Haut Commissariat aux droits de l'homme et à considérer l'établissement d'un bureau de ce dernier en Érythrée. Madame la rapporteuse spéciale, dans votre rapport, vous mentionnez que vous allez vous concentrer l'année prochaine sur la sensibilisation aux mécanismes de reddition de comptes au niveau national, tout en mettant l'accent sur le rôle des victimes dans de tels processus. Pourriez-vous donner de plus amples informations et détails à ce sujet Au-delà de la question de la reddition de comptes, que prévoyez-vous d'entreprendre pour améliorer la situation des droits de l'homme dans le pays En particulier, quelles pistes d'engagement et de coopération avec l'Érythrée sont selon vous possibles Je vous remercie. Thank you. Next is Spain. Muchas gracias, señor vicepresidente. Agradecemos el informe de la relatora especial sobre la evolución de la situación de los derechos humanos en Eritrea en este último año. Sin ignorar que el panorama descrito no es ciertamente alentador, no queremos dejar de pasar por alto dos datos positivos, como son la ratificación de la Convención contra la Tortura y una incipiente colaboración técnica con la Oficina del Alto Comisionado para los Derechos Humanos. Del informe mencionado destacaríamos dos graves problemas. Por un lado, la cuestión de los refugiados. De Eritrea huyen anualmente una cantidad de refugiados solo comparable a la de otros países con conflictos armados. Coincidimos con la relatora especial en que la situación en Eritrea está en el origen de esta salida masiva de refugiados a zonas de riesgo como Yemen o Libia. La especial vulnerabilidad de las mujeres y los niños eritreos es preocupante, por lo que solicitamos a toda la comunidad internacional un esfuerzo mayor de colaboración con UNICEF para evitar sufrimientos innecesarios en actores completamente inocentes. Por otro lado, la ausencia de mecanismos efectivos para asegurar la rendición de cuentas por las violaciones de derechos humanos. Esta carencia contribuye a espolear ese clima de impunidad del que se aprovechan los violadores de derechos humanos. Por último, nos sumamos al llamamiento de la relatora especial al Gobierno de Eritrea para que comience a cooperar con los mecanismos internacionales de promoción y protección de los derechos humanos y atienda las recomendaciones de la Comisión de Investigación. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Next is Sudan. Sudan. 
بكل اهتمام إلى العرض الذي قدمته المقررة الخاصة المعنية بحالة حقوق الإنسان في أريتريا ويرى السودان أن من أهم الأسباب التي أدت إلى إنشاء هذا المجلس في العام 2006 هو التخلص من السلبيات التي لازمت عملت عمل لجنة حقوق الإنسان السابقة والمتمثلة في عدم الشفافية والانتقائية وازدواجية المعايير ولقد أكدت التجارب أن الولايات التي تفرض على الدول لا تحقق الغايات المنشودة كما تتنافى مع مبادئ عمل هذا المجلس وفي ذلك تجاوز واضح لمبدأ سيادة الدول ومبادئ التعاون الدولي في تحقيق أهداف ميثاق الأمم المتحدة ومن بينها حماية حقوق الإنسان يثمن وفد بلاد تعاون دولة أريتريا مع آلية المراجعة الدورية الشاملة وتقديمها للتقرير الوطني الثاني بموجب الآلية كما يشجعها على مواسطة الجهود الوطنية الرامية إلى التصدي للتحديات التي تواجهها في تطوير وترقية حقوق الإنسان مستعينة بالتوصيات التي لقيت منها القبول والموافقة في جميع المجالات المتعلقة بحقوق الإنسان شكرا سيد نائب الرئيس شكرا لحضرتك نيكس سبيكر إز راشن فيدريشن Господин председатель, мы внимательно ознакомились с представленным докладом. Вынуждены констатировать, что рассмотрение эритрейского сюжета в СПЧ проходит в крайне политизированном ключе и вряд ли может способствовать улучшению ситуации с правами человека в этой стране. Мы хотели бы подтвердить нашу позицию относительно того, что вопросы положения в области прав человека в отдельных странах необходимо рассматривать исключительно в конструктивном ключе, с полноформатным подключением заинтересованного государства. Наилучшей площадкой для этого является механизм универсального периодического обзора. Хотели бы вновь подчеркнуть, что согласно резолюции 60.251, учредившей СПЧ, Совет является механизмом международного сотрудничества в области прав человека. Именно равноправное, взаимовложительное и конструктивное сотрудничество, а не шельмование неугодных кому-то государств и правительств, должно лежать в основе всех аспектов его работы. Благодарю вас. Thank you, Russian Federation, and I now give the floor to France. Merci, Monsieur le Président. La France associée à la déclaration de l'Union européenne. Nous remercions la rapporteure spéciale sur la situation des droits de l'homme en Érythrée pour la présentation de son rapport. La France encourage à nouveau les autorités érythréennes à coopérer avec la rapporteure spéciale, ainsi qu'avec l'ensemble des mécanismes des Nations Unies, y compris en leur autorisant l'accès à leur territoire. La coopération avec les mécanismes des droits de l'homme constitue pour les autorités des opportunités d'échanger et de présenter leurs points de vue, ainsi que de travailler à l'identification de pistes d'action concrètes. À cet égard, la France déplore le manque de mesures substantielles prises à ce jour par les autorités érythréennes pour mettre en œuvre les recommandations de la rapporteure spéciale comme celles formulées par ce Conseil dans ses précédentes résolutions. Cette situation est d'autant plus préoccupante au regard des conclusions de la commission d'enquête selon lesquelles certaines des violations des droits de l'homme qui ont été commises dans le pays sont constitutives de crimes contre l'humanité du fait de leur caractère systématique et généralisé. La situation des droits de l'homme en Érythrée continue de requérir l'attention de ce Conseil. C'est pourquoi la France est en faveur du renouvellement du mandat de la rapporteure spéciale à cette session du Conseil des droits de l'homme. Nous exhortons les autorités érythréennes à agir pour permettre une amélioration effective de la situation des droits de l'homme et des libertés fondamentales dans le pays. Les contacts établis entre les autorités érythréennes et le Haut Commissariat aux droits de l'homme, y, y compris par des visites sur place, sont positifs. Nous encourageons l'Érythrée à poursuivre en ce sens, en envisageant la création d'un bureau local du HCDH. Je vous remercie, Monsieur le Président. Thanks to you. Next is Croatia. Mr. Vice President, Croatia aligns itself with the statement of the European Union. We thank the Special Rapporteur for the presentation of her report on the situation of human rights in Eritrea. It is disheartening to hear that year after year the critical aspects of Eritrea's human rights situation remain unchanged. The human rights violations in the country, amounting to crimes against humanity even, are many, but all seem to be connected to the military service, which acts as a backdrop to most of them. 
Along forced military recruitment and recruitment of children, we have heard of enslavement, imprisonment, enforced disappearances, torture, persecution, sexual and gender-based violence and murder, all linked to military service. We stress, therefore, the importance of recognizing the right to conscientious objection to military service and point that conscientious objection is one of the key elements of the right to freedom of thought, conscience and religion. In this sense, Croatia highlights particularly the position of religious minorities in Eritrea, which continue to suffer mistreatment as arbitrary arrest and detention of individuals based on their religious belief continues. While we encourage Eritrea to continue in the good direction in terms of strengthening its cooperation with the international community and granting access to international delegations, we must call on the government to cooperate with and allow access to the special rapporteur and independent experts of the international and regional human rights mechanisms. Madam Special Rapporteur, in your report you mentioned the will of the government to cooperate with the international community, including development actors. How do you see the potential of development as a bridge for cooperation and communication? Thank you. Thank you. And next is China. Mr. President, the Chinese delegation noticed the special rapporteur's introduction. 中方一贯主张，各国通过建设性对话与合作，处理人权领域分歧。国际社会对厄立特里亚在促进和保护人权方面取得的进步和成就，应予以肯定。人权事业是各国经济社会发展的重要组成部分，必须根据本国国情和人民需求加以推进。中方呼吁国际社会全面、公正、客观看待厄里特里亚人权状况，根据厄里特里亚的意愿和需求，向其人权能力建设提供建设性帮助。非洲之角各国利益相连，休戚与共。中方真诚希望地区国家从非洲之角和平稳定大局和各国人民根本利益出发，和睦相处，增进互信。通过对话协商，妥善解决分歧，共谋发展，这符合地区国家的共同利益。谢谢主席先生。Thanks to China, and I now give the floor to Djibouti. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Mr. President, uh, Djibouti welcomes Ms. Kitarut and would like to thank her for her written report on the situation of human rights in Eritrea just presented to the Human Rights Council. My delegation appreciates the inclusive approach adopted by the Special Rapporteur which aimed to, acu uh, to uh, provide accurate information on the human rights situation in Eritrea despite the non-cooperation of Eritrean authorities. My delegation commends her great work carried out in the follow-up to the recommendation of the Commission of Inquiry on the situation of human rights in Eritrea since last year's resolution. We also believe that the Special Rapporteur should continue to reach out and to engage all relevant stakeholders, including Eritrean government, in order to fulfill her mandate. In this regard, Djibouti calls on Eritrea to fully cooperate with the Special Rapporteur. My delegation concurs with the recommendation of the Special Rapporteur regarding the government of Eritrea including the immediate end of serious and systematic human rights violations that have been reported and are currently committed by the government of Eritrea and urges for immediate and unconditional release of all those who are illegally and arbitrarily detained, especially the 13 Djiboutian prisoners of war detained in incommunicado since 2008. Djibouti also endorses the recommendation made by the Special Rapporteur to the international community, including those issued at the Security and Council and the African Union to take steps to prosecute persons who have committed crimes against humanity and to judge them, and to give victims the means to obtain adequate satisfaction by granting them the right to truth. Finally, Mr. President, my delegation will present with Somalia a resolution on the situation of human rights in Eritrea in order to renew the mandate of the Special Rapporteur during this session. I thank you. Thank you. Uh, I now give the floor to Ireland. Ireland aligned itself with the statement delivered by the European Union and has the following. Mr. Vice President, Ireland would like to thank the Special Rapporteur for her report and presentation today. We remain deeply troubled by the human rights situation in Eritrea. 
it is clear from the assessment of the Special Rapporteur that there has been minimal progress towards the reforms required to address the deep-rooted culture of impunity that continues to harm victims and protect perpetrators of gross human rights abuses in Eritrea. We reiterate our call for the Government of Eritrea to take concrete steps to protect its citizens and ensure accountability for past and persistent crimes, including arbitrary detention, torture, sexual and gender-based violence, enforced disappearance and religious persecution. We acknowledge the challenges faced by Eritrea in promoting, promoting economic development and providing for its citizens. However, the practice of, in, of indefinite national service constitutes a severe de denial of liberty. Ireland once again calls upon the government to end this practice. Ireland is committed to working with EU and international partners to engage in political and economic dialogue with the government. It is vital, however, that this is accompanied by concrete actions to improve the human rights situation for its citizens and by con constructive engagement with international and regional human rights mechanisms. We therefore urge the government of Eritrea to uphold its commitment to effectively implement the accepted recommendations of the second cycle of the UPR, cooperate with the mandate of the Special Rapporteur and other regional and international human rights mechanisms and lift restrictions on civil society and independent media in the country. Special Rapporteur, your, repo your report notes the important role of civil society in advocating for human rights violations. With that in mind, we would be interested to hear your views on how the international community can support civil society in Eritrea and promote dialogue between the government and civil society organisations in order to build on the framework for progress provided by the accepted UPR recommendations. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I now give the floor to Greece. Mr. President, Greece allies itself with a statement delivered by the European Union. Greece would like to add its voice to all those that have called the government of Eritrea to pay heed to the special rapporteur's recommendations and to proceed to all suggested acts in order to improve the situation of human rights in the country. We regret the fact that the government of Eritrea has yet to take the necessary steps to respect its obligations under international human rights treaties. An issue of grave concern in this respect continues to be the arbitrary arrest and detention of citizens, their imprisonment in harsh and life-threatening conditions, and the use of torture, killing and sexual violence against them. An issue also of great concern for us is the fate of the unaccompanied children that due to the harsh conditions of human rights and to the specter of indefinite conscription into military service are attempting to flee the country, falling off in victims of human trafficking, sexual violence and exploitation and forced labor. Besides what was said about the situation of human rights in Eritrea, we should point out that the Eritrean authorities have recently illegally confiscated real estate property which belonged to the Greek community of Asmara and houses its offices. The said community is in possession of, a, of an official document by which the real estate property in question was formally returned to the Greek community in Asmara after confiscation by the Megisto regime. Furthermore, by the very same document, the authorities offered their apologies for the delay in returning the said property to its rightful owners. Even more alarming is the fact that the illegal seizure of the above-mentioned premises constitutes a breach of international law, since this real estate complex also houses the office of the Honorary Consulate General of Greece. It is needless to remind you that the unhindered work of honorary consulates is fully covered by the Vienna Convention on Consular Relations of 1963. Moreover, this action contravenes the Universal Declaration of Human Rights of 1948, which stipulates at Article 17 that no one shall be arbitrarily deprived of his property. In light of the above, we demand that the government of Eritrea immediately and unconditionally returns the property of the Greek community to its legal owners. I thank you. Thank you. Next is Belarus. Беларусь последовательно выступает против практики селективного и политически мотивированного создания в Совете специальных страновых процедур. Специальные страновые мандаты в большинстве случаев не признаны затрагиваемыми правительствами и не имеют доступа в страны, не способны в принципе беспристрастно осуществлять возложенные на них функции. Их мониторинговые функции сводятся к дистанционному сбору информации из вторичных и, как правило, не заслуживающих доверия источников информации. Отсюда доклады, представляемые в Совете страновыми мандатами, носят исключительно ангажированный и однобокий характер и искажают реальную картину на местах. Рекомендации некоторых страновых спецпроцедур вообще оторваны от реалий и грубо нарушают устав Организации Объединенных Наций. Кодекс поведения мандатариев существует в теории, на деле он не работает. Это порождает проблему неподотчетности страновых спецпроцедур Совету. 
Они подотчетны только странам или группам стран, которые выступили инициаторами создания этих мандатов. Полагаем, что только через уважительный диалог с правительствами возможно достичь задач в деле поощрения и защиты прав человека. Совету и правозащитным механизмам следует продолжить усилия по налаживанию подлинного диалога с правительством Эритреи и, продолжить стране, и предложить стране техническую помощь и содействие в соответствии с национальными потребностями и приоритетами, в том числе в контексте принятых правительством рекомендаций универсального периодического обзора. Я благодарю вас. Thank you. Next to the UK. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. The UK thanks the Special Rapporteur for her report. The UK remains concerned at the human rights situation in Eritrea. We continue to make clear to the government the need to ensure that those engaged in the national service system have a clearly defined limit to their period of service and receive financial compensation commensurate to their duties. The government of Eritrea should also implement the constitution respect, complete freedom of religion and belief, and release those in arbitrary detention. The UK shares the Special Rapporteur's concerns about the plight of Eritrean refugees and will continue to work with the EU and regional partners in this regard. The UK recognises the Special Rapporteur's efforts, including in paragraph 9 of her report, to consider the wider regional context, whilst agreeing that these factors do not justify Eritrea's current national service policy and the related detentions. We urge the government of Eritrea to continue to improve its relationships with the international community and to explore ways in which the international community can assist in implementing the Special Rapporteur's recommendations, as well as the Universal Periodic Review recommendations accepted by the government of Eritrea. Madam Special Rapporteur, what steps do you propose to take to build relations with the GSE and is there a priority area on which she proposes to take steps in the final year of her mandate to advance progress on human rights in Eritrea and what can member states do to support her? Thank you. Thank you. Next is Israel. Mr. Vice President. I would like to thank the Special Rapporteur on Eritrea for her presentation. My intervention will be brief and will refer to the request expressed by the Special Rapporteur to visit Israel in order to conduct meetings relevant to her mandate. In the spirit of cooperation with the Council's special procedures, I would like to announce that Israel has decided to accept the Rapporteur's request and extends an invitation to the Rapporteur to visit Israel during the second half of 2017. We stand ready to discuss with the mandate holder all the different modalities related to her intended visit. I thank you, Mr. Vice President. Thank you for this statement. Uh, now we move to Venezuela. President, Venezuela se opone por razones de principios a los mandatos dirigidos específicamente contra los países en desarrollo y más aún, con estos no gozan de la aceptación del Estado concernido. Hemos denunciado que con estos mandatos se pretende utilizar estos espacios como instrumento contra países soberanos que en nada contribuyen a mejorar la situación de los derechos humanos en el terreno. Son mandatos que violan los principios de respeto a la integridad, soberanía y no injerencia en los asuntos internos de los Estados contenidos en la Carta de las Naciones Unidas. El examen periódico universal ha demostrado ser el mecanismo más idóneo para promover la cooperación internacional en derechos humanos ya que es un diálogo entre iguales y sin politización. Reiteramos una vez más la imperiosa necesidad de que este Consejo cumpla con su mandato de promover y proteger los derechos humanos sobre la base del diálogo genuino y la cooperación con estricto apego al principio de universalidad y sin apelar a la coacción, a los dobles raseros y a la politización. Deploramos la imposición de estos hostiles mandatos específicos contra países soberanos y países en desarrollo. Muchas gracias, señor presidente. Thanks to you, sir. Uh, next is Somalia. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Somalia, welcome to oral update the report of a special reporter on the situation of the human rights in Eritrea. My delegation wishes to renew the mandate of the special reporter with aim to continue the remarkable work that has been carried out in the following up to the recommendation 
of the Commission of Inquiry of the situation of the so, uh, human rights in, in, the, in, in the Eritrea. Yeah. Mr. Brett, we are also welcoming against the concern of the Commission of Inquiry filing regarding crime evolving human rights violence. Mr. President, Mr. Vice President, Eritrea should comply with its international obligation and the commitment. We urge the international community to continue strengthening the efforts of the issue of the protection of the old Eritrean in the country and the interpretation and, the, and those who are feeling from the country, especially Ankara children. Finally, we call of the government of Eritrea to release 13 Jebusian personnel inconditional and we welcome for previously released. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Thanks to you. Uh, Cuba? Señor Vicepresidente, Cuba está convencida de que la cooperación y el diálogo debe primar al abordar situaciones de derechos humanos que requieren la atención y el apoyo de la comunidad internacional. Privilegiamos el enfoque que prioriza tender puentes para propiciar la comprensión de las diferentes realidades e identificar los retos para la búsqueda de soluciones que tengan en cuenta las preocupaciones de todos. Solo así, las medidas a implementar pueden resultar efectivas y contribuir a promover y proteger los derechos humanos de las poblaciones afectadas. Como posición de principios, Cuba no favorece el involucramiento del Consejo de Seguridad en temas de derechos humanos, como propone la relatora, al considerar que ello no forma parte del, del mandato de dicho órgano. Asimismo, el involucramiento del Consejo implica en la práctica que se imponga un enfoque punitivo en la búsqueda de solución a la cuestión de que se trate, lo cual reduce o elimina las posibilidades de que puedan explorarse oportunidades más factibles y constructivas para propiciar la cooperación internacional, la asistencia técnica y el apoyo que puedan dar países en capacidad de hacerlo, preferentemente del entorno regional correspondiente. Cuba considera que el Consejo de Derechos Humanos no debe renunciar a explorar y promover la apertura de nuevas avenidas de cooperación y diálogo con Eritrea en un marco de entendimiento mutuo, intercambio respetuoso, confianza y transparencia, los cuales resultan esenciales para impulsar una verdadera cooperación internacional y avanzar de manera efectiva en la promoción y protección de todos los derechos humanos para todos. Muchas gracias. Thanks, Cuba. Next is Netherlands. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. The Netherlands fully aligns itself with the EU statement and would like to thank Special Rapporteur Ms. Keith Ruth for her report. We would like to add the following remarks in our national capacity. The human rights situation in Eritrea remains to have a serious concern. The Netherlands is particularly worried about the continued practice of indefinite national service, of arbitrary detentions, the absence of freedom of expression, freedom of religion or belief, the absence of the rule of law and of a valid constitution. We remind the government of Eritrea that it is the state's primary responsibility to protect its population against crimes against humanity and other human rights violations and to hold those responsible for such violations accountable. In the absence of such guarantees, it is essential that the human rights situation on the ground is established independently. We therefore urge the government of Eritrea to cooperate with and allow access to the Special Rapporteur and other human rights mechanisms. Moreover, we are greatly concerned by the government's practices outside of Eritrea. We call on the government of Eritrea to immediately stop demanding Eritreans in the diaspora to sign the so-called regret forms, forcing the acceptance of responsibility for any crime if committed before leaving the country. It is recalled that this is not admissible under the rule of law. No one is to be held guilty of a charge unless this guilt has been established by a competent court. We are equally alarmed about renewed reports that the government of Eritrea uses coercion, fraud and other illicit means to collect taxes and other contributions outside Eritrea from its nationals and other individuals of Eritrean descent. We strongly recall the decision by the UN Security Council Resolution 2023 deciding that the government of Eritrea shall abstain from such practices. Ms. Keith Ruth, we would like to ask if you could elaborate on possible avenues states and other actors could consider to further support human rights, for example, in the area of accountability for the support of human rights in Eritrea. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Thanks to you. This was the last speaker on the government list. Uh, we'll move now to the list of the uh, NGOs. And the first on my list is the International Service for Human Rights. 
Merci, Monsieur le Président. My name is Veronica Almedom, and I'm making this statement on behalf of ICHR and its partner, IFI. A year ago, the Commission of Inquiry on Eritrea formulated eight very pragmatic recommendations to the Eritrean government on governance and administration of justice. Among these recommendations, the establishment of an independent national uh, human rights institution with a pr uh, protection mandate, including to investigate human rights violations and the need to allow human rights defenders and independent civil society organizations to operate without interference. With the support offered by the international community, the implementation of these recommendations could have had a very positive impact by now. Not only, it would, ha not only would it have created an environment for the, protection, the promotion and the protection of human rights, but also it would have uh, give, well also it would have reinforced the efforts of many member states in this attendance. Your Excellencies, human rights defenders play a critical role in the protection and promotion of human rights in any country. Their objective is to ensure that each of us enjoys and exercises our fundamental rights as human beings. In Eritrea, there is no space for civil society to promote and protect human rights. All human rights defenders are in exile. Your, um, Your Excellencies, each of us in this room were able to develop our own and distinct identity and personality or even career because of a context where our freedoms were strengthened and preserved against all attacks. We all know how precious freedom is and how it is so closely connected to our dignity. Therefore, I respectfully ask the Eritrean authorities to, to regard self-expression, self-development of all, and not just a few, as an essential resource for the country. I also ask the Eritrean authorities to demonstrate more tolerance in the face of critics. I thank you. Thank you. Uh, next is the Eastern, Eastern Horn of Africa Human Rights Defenders Project. Mr. President, on behalf of Eastern Horn of Africa Human Rights Defenders Project, I would like to thank the Special Rapporteur for her report in particular with regard to her recommendations to address past and ongoing human rights violations in Eritrea. One year ago, a Commission of Inquiry presented its findings to the 32nd session of this Council, concluding that there are reasonable grounds to believe that crimes against humanity, the most egregious violations of international law, have been and continue to be committed under the regime of President Isaiah Safuarki. Although we regret the lack of strong action toward establishing accountability mechanisms by international and regional human rights body, the Special Rapporteur continues to fulfill an invaluable role in shining a light on the ongoing human rights violations in Eritrea. The mandate has been instrumental in monitoring the dire situation in the country and provides a crucial platform to help amplify the voices of victims. It is also essential in ensuring future accountability for alleged crimes against humanity. As the Special Rapporteur's report reflects, there has been no indication that the Eritrean government is willing to take steps to improve its human rights record, ensure justice and redress for victims, or provide clarity on the situation of detained human rights defenders and journalists, many of whom have been held in incommunicado for over a decade. Mr. President, we echo the Special Rapporteur's observation that business as usual cannot be an option while Eritreans continue to suffer and strongly urge that the mandate be renewed. I thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Now move to the Christian Solidarity Worldwide. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Christian Solidarity Worldwide thanks the Special Rapporteur for her report, but notes the continuing refusal of the Eritrean government to engage with the mandate holder and a lack of progress in addressing the grave violations highlighted by the Commission of Inquiry. We believe constructive engagement with the Special Rapporteur and other special procedures would have indicated a genuine desire to improve the human rights situation. We call for the renewal of the Special Rapporteur's mandate in order to ensure continued monitoring to follow up on implementation of recommendations and to assist in the formulation of accountability mechanisms. We also call for renewed efforts by Member States towards holding perpetrators of international crimes accountable before national, regional and international justice mechanisms. As indicated in the Special Rapporteur's report, fundamental freedoms are still violated comprehensively. 
With regard to freedom of religion and belief, CSW has learned that during May 2017, 122 Christians from non-sanctioned churches were detained in a campaign that has been ongoing since the 2002 church closures. 45 were arrested in Adikwala. The arrest left 23 children without their parents. 15 people were rounded up in Gindai while in Asmara. 45 people were arrested during one raid and 17 during another one. Orthodox Patriarch Abune Antonius, who remains under incommunicado house arrest, is said to be gravely ill after being injected during a medical examination. The severe human rights violations are the root causes of the Eritrean exodus, which is said to number 5,000 per month. Particularly alarming are the numbers of unaccompanied minors fleeing, Ethiop fleeing to Ethiopia, Sudan and further afield, some as young as eight. Disturbing information is emerging of unaccompanied minors in Alexandria, Egypt, some of whom have been groomed or otherwise lured into sex trade. Mr. Vice President, Eritreans are fleeing comprehensive repression. We urge the member states to respect the principle of non refoulema to offer sanctuary and protection, and to prioritize urgently the safety of children and other vulnerable persons. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Thank you. Next is the International Fellowship for Reconciliation. Thank you. The International Fellowship of Reconciliation and Human Rights Concerned Eritrea thanks the Special Rapporteur for her report. Mr. Vice President, after five years of the Special Rapporteur's mandate, Eritrea is no closer to cooperating effectively with the Human Rights Council and has not implemented any recommendation by the Special Rapporteur, the Commission of Inquiry or even the UPR. Eritrea has failed to implement its 1997 constitution or to formulate a new one. Independent civil society or human rights organizations are still non-existent. The government has not reformed its national service program in line with international law. Eritreans continue to be subjected to an indefinite term that is arbitrarily extended and amounts to modern-day slavery. The rights of conscripts are not respected. Sexual exploitation and violence against female conscripts is rampant. Cases of arbitrary arrest and detention continue to be reported, with people often being held incommunicado without charge or trial. They are arrested for attempting to evade military service, for trying to flee the country, for practicing their religion, and for suspected opposition to the government. The use of torture by Eritrean officials continues. Enforced disappearances, rape, and murder have all occurred as part of a campaign to instill fear. The perpetrators of these crimes are immune from persecution, and the judicial system is inadequate for the prosecution of crimes against humanity. Individuals who manage to flee Eritrea but are returned are subjected to extrajudicial punishment, detained in inhuman conditions, and returned to military service, enslavement, and forced labor. Mr. Vice President, we call on the Council to support in full the Special Rapporteur's recommendations and to renew her mandate. The Eritrean people need justice and reparations. Justice requires nothing less. Thank you. Thanks to you. Uh, we now move to the next uh, NGO, Article 19, International Center Against Censorship. Mr. Vice President, Article 19 welcomes the report of the UN Special Rapporteur on the human rights situation in Eritrea. We remain disturbed that the denial of freedom of expression, assembly and association rights remains systematically entrenched as the Commission of Inquiry found last year. The silencing of independent media and critical voices has been central to the Eritrean government's apparatus of repression, sustaining a climate of impunity worsened by a perpetual state of emergency and absence of the rule of law. No private media have existed in Eritrea since the last eight private newspapers were forced to close in 2001, when at least 18 journalists and 11 former government officials, part of a collective known as G15, were arrested on the pretext of national security. These detentions have been condemned by two ACHPR decisions, the most recent in 2016. Article 19 estimates that 69 journalists have been arbitrarily arrested and detained for exercising their right to freedom of expression since 2001 without charge or fair trial. While at least eight journalists ha have died in detention, a wall of silence means it is impossible to know how many others remain in prison, where they are and what their condition is. Government-controlled media is the only type of local media in Eritrea. They act as a mouthpiece of the Ministry of Information. Access to alternative information sources, including online, is limited. We share the Special Rapporteur's concerns that since 2016, new regulations require internet cafes to register customers before they can use the internet. 
We also note that Eritrea's sole and government-owned telecommunication provider continues to routinely block online news sources. Internet penetration levels and internet speeds remain woefully slow. We again call on the Eritrean government to account for the whereabouts and well-being of detained journalists and G15 polit political prisoners and ensure the unconditional release of those that are still alive and reparations made to victims or their families. We call on the Eritrean government to end its policy of non-cooperation with the United Nations, including the Special Rapporteur, and to facilitate access to the country at the earliest opportunity. The institutions that are needed in Eritrea to safeguard human rights can only be established with technical assistance, which will benefit the Eritrean people. This Council must renew the Special Rapporteur's mandate and ensure accountability for human rights violations in the country, including through referral of the situation to the UN Security Council. I thank you. Thank you. Next is International Pen. Penn International remains deeply concerned by the severe restrictions on freedom of expression in Eritrea, which in 2017 continues to be one of the worst jailers of writers and dissident voices in the world. Since the government cracked down on dissent in September 2001, when 11 government officials, 12 journalists and numerous other dis dissidents were arrested, there has been no independent media, no registered political parties apart from the ruling PFTJ and no national elections in the country. In the years following the 2001 crackdown, journalists and other writers have continued to be arrested. Penn is aware of at least 17 journalists currently held incommunicado without trial or in circumstances amounting to enforced disappearance, some of whom are believed to have died in the appalling conditions of Eritrean prisons. Their deaths, which have not been officially confirmed, have been attributed to the harsh conditions and lack of medical attention of these prisoners. The Foreign Minister of Eritrea claimed in an interview with Radio France Internationale in June 2016 that all of the journalists and politicians arrested in the widespread crackdown are alive, though no proof has been provided. In the same interview, the Foreign Minister said that these men would be tried when the government decides and that they are political prisoners. Eritrean Swedish journalist Darish Isaac who was awarded the UNESCO Guillermo Cano World Press Freedom Prize in 2017, is one of many journalists detained in Comunicado. Isaac was arrested along with other journalists as part of the September 20, 2001 crackdown. Almost 16 years on, there has been no justice for the arbitrary arrests of Daoud Isaac and the other journalists detained, and family members have been left in the dark as to their whereabouts and well-being. In addition to the appalling conditions faced by the chain journalists, extensive censorship practices have also severely restricted literary, artistic and cultural production. In light of the dire situation for free expression, Penn International encourages the Human Rights Council to urge the Eritrean government to either provide proof of life for these journalists or to confirm the circumstances of their death. To further ensure accountability and justice for the victims of crimes committed by urging the Security Council to refer Eritrea to the ICC and to renew the mandate of the UN Special Rapporteur. We thank you. Thank you. Next is Civics. Thank you, Mr. President. Civicas welcome the report of Special Rapporteur on Eritrea and applauds her efforts to amplify the voices of civil society and victims of human rights violations in Eritrea and in diaspora. Mr. President, the Special Rapporteur report to the Council is unequivocal in that Eritreans continue to be subjected to grave and systematic violation of fundamental freedoms, some of which amount to the crimes against humanity. Worryingly, the Special Rapporteur has, in, has in concluded that the human rights situation in Eritrea has no, signific, has no significant improved. We remain deeply concerned that the government has failed to take care of adequate measures to address the human rights situation in Eritrea, as documented by the Commissioner of the Inquiry. During the reporting period, the Special Rapporteur received information that the government military and national service programs remain arbitrary and voluntary, which is tantamount to enslavement. The government has further failed to release countless arbitrary detained prisoners for exercising their fundamental rights. As a result of this and other deprivation of human rights, thousands of Eritreans, including scores of unconfined children, are forced to secure refuge abroad every year. We support the Special Rapporteur's decision to devote greater time and resources to addressing impunity 
include engaging a diversity of actors to help facilitate access to justice and accountability for human rights violations. We urge the government of Eritrea to take proactive measures to implement the specific and time-bound benchmarks developed by the Special Rapporteur. We respectively request members and observer states of the Council to co-sponsor a resolution renewing the mandate of the UN Special Rapporteur on Eritrea and provide the mandate holder with all necessary support. We thank you. Thank you. Now we move on to Human Rights Watch. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Last year's Council resolution condemned in the strongest terms the systematic, widespread and gross human rights violations by the Eritrean government. The Council cited arbitrary detention, torture, sexual violence, religious oppression, denials of the rights to free expression and peaceful assembly, among others. The resolution expressed grave concern over the unlimited conscription of Eritrea's citizens and the use of conscripts in forced labor. The Council resolution urged Eritrea to end these practices and allow international and regional human rights bodies, including special rapporteurs, unhindered access to the country to monitor progress. Unfortunately, as the Special Rapporteur's report makes clear, the Eritrean government has ignored the Council's resolution. Little change, if any, has occurred. Prisoners remain jailed without trial, indefinitely and sometimes incommunicado. Torture and captivity continues. No independent press is allowed. Endless conscription and its abuses still control the lives of Eritreans, especially the young. Forced labor using conscripts remains common. The government continues to refuse to give UN and international human rights monitoring bodies access to the country. It has made no effort to hold violators of human rights accountable. In the absence of willingness by the Eritrean government to end its abuses and bring the abusers to justice, Human Rights Watch joins the Special Rapporteur in urging the Council to recommend the international community to implement the principle of universal jurisdiction. As we said here last year, all states should investigate and evidence permitting prosecute in a fair trial individuals found on their territories who are alleged to be responsible for human rights violations in Eritrea amounting to crimes under international law. The Council should renew the Special Rapporteur's mandate, provide all necessary support and urge the government of Eritrea to allow unencumbered access. Finally, we join the Special Rapporteur in urging the Council to recommend that all countries permit fleeing Eritreans to lodge asylum claims and then assess those claims fairly. For many Eritreans, a flight to freedom remains the only way to avoid the Eritrean government's rampant brutalities. Thank you. Thank you. This was actually the last speaker we can accommodate at this meeting. Uh, I now invite Ms. Kizarus to respond to the questions and comments made at this stage, Thank and you. as well as your concluding remarks. Yes. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Vice President. Um, allow me at the outset to thank each and every one of you uh, who have put questions to me, have shown interest in my work and have extended invitations for me to continue this work. Um, I am not going to reply to the personal attacks by the distinguished delegates from Eritrea. We in Africa like a lot some sayings, and I'm just going to use one from my Creole language from Mauritius, which is this. If a mango tree is not bearing fruit, stones are not thrown at it. So this is my response. And, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a very indigenous one and um, not one taken from an emperor or wherever, uh, somewhere else. Um, if one looks at the situation, really, I have talked about how prisoners are still unaccounted for, people are still incommunicado, the situation of uh, national service is still uh, prevailing, etc., etc. However, um, what I would like to say with this, uh, in this regard is that up to now I have delivered on my job to the best of my ability and in accordance with the Code of Conduct for Special Procedures Mandate Holders, bearing in mind all the enshrined values in the Code of Conduct. 
Um, I would like to start by saying, uh, with regards, I'll take the first one with regards to the list, uh, the questions which have been uh, posed to me. I have extended a hand of cooperation to the government ever since I took up this mandate, and even in, um, in a, in a just before uh, writing this report, I did send a list of issues I wanted to discuss. No response was, uh, was received. Now, having said that, I would like to start by um, taking the issues around the UPR. It is something which has come up quite a bit in terms of cooperation and how could this process be enhanced. Um, I really start, I had said it before, the selective approach of the 92 recommendations to a very specific group of uh, rights is not conducive to, um, to a, a dialogue and to a review which is respectful of the principles, basic principles of human rights and I don't need to go through the long list, the indivisibility principle and, uh, uh, and all those. So it already starts from there. What I would say though, the need for civil society to be present in the, uh, in the process, it's not only process but substance. And uh, it is important that all voices be heard, all voices of civil society, all those who work on human rights, not only government-sponsored uh, one. Um, having said that, uh, whether OHCHR uh, has, uh, you know, that from their uh, meeting, from their visit, uh, there has been any uh, cooperation with regards to the collection of information, etc. Um, I would like to say here, I think what is really required, independent of the special rapporteur, we need more eyes and uh, ears to hear about the human rights situation in the country. And uh, a, monitoring a monitoring mandate with written reports to the Council from OHCHR would be very welcome. It would be a different voice from that of the special rapporteur, from those who, are in, who have been able to go inside and uh, collect the right information. Not that I'm not able to do that, but it would be from a different angle and would incorporate directly the voice of the government since the government uh, doesn't, uh, doesn't, doesn't um, interact with the mandate of the special rapporteur. Um, how best to work uh, together, really, um, one of the questions which was posed to me. I have no other response than to say one has to insist on the supremacy of human rights. I have said it in my report and I reiterate it. If one bargains, if human rights become bargaining chips in order to cooperate, in order to engage, etc., then we are not going to get strong results in that particular field. Um, I would, uh, the next question I'd like to address is with regards to accountability. I have looked at the issue in my, uh, in my report. I think it is a very important aspect because having talked to so many Eritreans, there are two things which come up. I would like to know what has happened to my father who is in jail, who was jailed. I have suffered human rights violations. I need justice. And the best way to do that is through accountability mechanisms. However, there are different ways of addressing that. The best would be, as I have said before, that Eritrea puts 
in place mechanisms. But if that is not going to happen, since I have already uh, informed the Council that I have seen no progress in terms of setting in place um, those mechanisms, checks and balances which would be useful for this very particular uh, process. There is still no constitution, there is still uh, no uh, uh, elected assembly, uh, no judiciary which is independent, etc. So we need to look at other means. Other means would be for um, Eritrean victims to get organized, to use whatever is at their disposal and uh, to make their voices heard in different ways. Um, that would be, for example, to, to create victims' organizations, for civil society to create support networks, etc. Um, the other uh, aspect uh, I would uh, talk about is with regards to refugees. My plea is really to look beyond the numbers, as I said earlier. Look beyond the numbers and ensure that you see the human tragedy in each and every story of, of a refugee. Uh, the other one is, uh, I have heard several comments with regards to uh, the non-proliferation, or rather that uh, many members do not agree with uh, country-specific mandates. Mr. Vice President, we are in your hands. We are mandate holders and we deliver our mandate according to what the Council has prescribed for us and in accordance with the Code of Conduct. There is not much I'd like to say on this. Uh, and it's not in my remit in any case to question this aspect. Um, uh, the other one uh, which I would like to uh, address uh, at this point is uh, with regards to cooperation. What has been Eritrea's cooperation with other uh, mechanisms, for example? Um, if I look at uh, what I, uh, I have been able to collect uh, over time, is very simple. There are, uh, there are very specific requests for visits to Eritrea. The first one dates from 2003, and it has remained un, um, unattended to. So, really, I think we need something better in terms of how the, uh, Eritrea cooperates with, with the mechanisms of uh, the Council. And also one cannot pick and choose which one one would invite or not because we are all mandate holders and everything is to advance human rights. So I would urge the Eritrean government, in fact, to consider, first of all, inviting me and request and, and to respond to the different requests which had been made since 2003. Now, uh, with regards to, uh, yeah, that was cooperation with special procedures, role of the international uh, community with regards to the potential of development as a bridge for cooperation and communication. I think one would need to look at it from a rights-based approach. Development is a human rights, and development cannot be devoid of other issues, such as the right to, uh, right to freedom of expression, right to uh, association, etc. All these are connected and all need to be addressed. So the cooperation, the bridge, in fact, is to view development from a rights-based approach. The role of civil society. We've heard quite a bit about that. In a country where there are no checks and balances inbuilt in the system, where such checks and balances would have been exercised through a constitution, through the presence of, uh, of uh, an independent judiciary, etc., then the role of civil society becomes indeed a very important one. 
They are the ones who would be able to act as watchdogs. They would be able to uh, report internationally what are the issues, which, what are the rights being violated, what are the issues, how could uh, those be addressed. So the role of civil society cannot be diminished in uh, any way. One of the things which could be very concrete action with regards to civil society would be for Eritrea to enact laws which allows free civil society um, organizations in the country, which uh, looks at uh, ensuring that they're able to, uh, to operate without constraints. So that would be a very, as I said, a very concrete action in this field. Um, also, uh, with regards to uh, coming back, rather, to accountability, I would like to go back to my report, which I have uh, tabled uh, for the before the Council. Um, really, as of uh, now, what is really required, as I have said, the call for justice is quite, uh, is quite strong. And it would be in the remit of the Council as well as member states to ensure that voices calling for justice are not drowned. Mr. President, uh, what would uh, be improvements? Uh, I, have, uh, I have listed already the areas which could be, and the, which could be benchmarks what I would request the Council is really to have those, those areas developed into strong benchmarks which the Council itself can be looking at. Has there been a constitution enacted? Has there been, what are the steps which have been taken for the judiciary to be made independent? What steps have been made to ensure that detention conditions are respectful of human rights standards. Is solitary confinement still um, imposed? In what conditions? What are the conditions in which uh, solitary confinement or incommunicado detention uh, is imposed? As we know, this should be for the, for example, solitary confinement is for the shortest period. And some of the reports I have is that there are people in solitary confinement for prolonged periods. What is the effect of all those uh, years or days and years in solitary confinement? What does it have? Access to proper medical care, etc. The reason why I'm raising this is because there are two things which have been brought strongly, three in fact, which has been the accountability issue. Secondly, all the violations within the national service. And thirdly, the prison conditions. So these are areas where the Council will have a very important role that, they can, that can be uh, to monitor uh, the, the real uh, situation. Um, also, uh, the list of recommendations, I selected very few uh, when I was addressing you earlier, uh, but uh, also uh, what I'd like to say is that you know, accumulating recommendations from the Special Rapporteur, from the Commission of Inquiry, and not acting on those does not show willingness to be responsive to what the Council is saying. So I would really request Eritrea to put in place the necessary steps and for the Council to be vigilant that the recommendations are in fact being implemented. Mr. President, I would like to end here and say that we still have a long way to go. There is still a lot that needs to be done for human rights to be enjoyed by each and every one in Eritrea. And it is an incumbent on the Council to remain vigilant and to continue monitoring the situation. I thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much, Madam Special Rapporteur, for your concluding remarks. Uh, we have now
concluded our interactive dialogue with the Special Rapporteur on the Situation of Human Rights in Eritrea. I wish to thank Ms. Sheila Kisarus for her presence and presentation today, as well as of the participants who have contributed to and enriched our discussion. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I understand that one delegation have requested uh, to exercise the right to reply, and I would like now to give the floor to the distinguished permanent representative of Ethiopia. You have three minutes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Before I exercise my right of reply to the baseless accusations of the representative of Eritrea against Ethiopia, I wish to warmly welcome the report of the Special Rapporteur and express our appreciation for her well-written and documented evidence presented to us. The report once again strongly confirms the serious gross and systematic violations of human rights in Eritrea, including crime against humanity that the repressive regime in Eritrea continues to commit against its own people. Ethiopia supports the continuation of the mandate of the Special Rapporteur and reiterates the need to urgently implement the recommendations made by the Commission of Inquiry and the Special Rapporteur. For this, we believe that the Special Rapporteur needs all the required support in terms of resources, both finance and manpower, in order to execute her mandate as requested by this Council. We therefore call on the Council to support the Special Rapporteur. Finally, Mr. Vice President, my delegation doesn't want to give a chance to the Eritrean delegation to distract the attention of the Council from the real Eritrean serious violations of human rights situation by responding to the baseless allegations labeled against Ethiopia. It's also regrettable to hear unethical and undiplomatic words uttered about the Special Rapporteur who has been appointed by this distinguished body and served well this Council. By doing this, Eritrea once again shows in a flagrant manner to what extent it can go to insult and dis disrespect this Council. After all, there is nothing that one can expect from a regime that doesn't not only respect the human dignity of its nationals, but gravely and systematically violates their rights in a total disregard in universal, uh, of universally accepted human rights norms. I thank you, Mr. Vice President. Thank you. Okay. That would bring us to the end of the meeting, if I see no more requests for the floor. And I would like to remind you that the deadline for the submission of dra draft proposals is tomorrow, Thursday, 15th of June at 1 p.m. I repeat again, deadline of submission of draft resolutions is tomorrow, Thursday, 15th June at 1 p.m. Any request for extension should be explained and communicated in advance of the deadline expiring to the Secretariat and will be approved by the Human Rights Council only under exceptional circumstances. An extension will be granted only once for a maximum of 24 hours. The submission of a proposal after the submission deadline will therefore need prior approval by the Council before it is registered by the Secretariat. We will reconvene tomorrow at 10 a.m. I repeat, the Council will reconvene tomorrow at 10 a.m. to begin the interactive dialogue with the Commission of Inquiry on Burundi. I hereby declare closed the 21st meeting of the 35th session of the Human Rights Council.